Hi, I'm Charles Malachi, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint and today we're going to be discussing 10 helpful tips when planting a fruit tree and actually this applies to any tree in your garden. Um, what I'm holding here in front of me is a wonderful pomegranate tree and we're going to use this as for demonstration purposes. If you want to zoom in, if you're interested in planting um, a wonderful pomegranate, come a little closer and I'll share this label with you and we can read it together. So take a look over here, and it says that this is a low water use plant, so it's considered a drought tolerant plant. The wonderful pomegranate, and that's the variety um, over here. And on the back side it says that the size of the tree will be anywhere from 20 feet tall to about 15 feet wide. So this gives you an idea about the tree. And my first tip to you is to make sure that you start off with a tree that's either grafted or a cutting. And pomegranates are usually propagated from cuttings, which is simply taking a stem, such as this over here, and we're actually gonna be removing this stem, um, but I'll just do an example. If we were to take off the stem and plant it, this here would be a cutting. And this plant would now be identical to this plant that we just purchased from the nursery. So. That's one way of propagating fruit. Once you know that it actually has an excellent variety of fruit, size, um, that it's a <laughs> continuous yielding plant, then, then you'll propagate it, either by grafting or cutting. So we know that this is gonna be as good as the original wonderful pomegranate tree that was discovered many decades ago. The next step is you wanna dig a hole that's typically two times wider than the size of your container. So here's my container. We typically want to go about two containers wide and typically no deeper than the depth of the container. By the time I improve the soil, the soil is going to relax a little bit more and it's going to sink a little bit deeper. So you don't want to go too deep with the hole. What's more important is to actually improve the condition of the soil around the root ball and less underneath it. But you do want to add a couple of inches, let's say below. Next step is we want to add some compost into the soil and typically you're going to want to add two times as much of the native soil as you're pulling out you're going to want to add about as much compost to the soil so we're going to take this here and we're going to add some compost to your garden and this here you can see is one product and kellogg's makes this grow mulch variety and there's also and there's also an amend product as well which is good and it's pretty much derived from forest product you can see it's got a lot of wood chips um, it probably had a lot of leaves in it once upon a time it's got poultry manure it's got a variety of things which actually bring a lot of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium which are your three major micronutrients for the soil and this will help feed the soil microorganisms and help your plant off to a good start everything that we're going to be doing in our garden is always organic and the primary purpose is we're trying to feed the soil organisms so this step is to make sure that you're actually adding a compost to your soil, whether it's derived from your garden or purchased from your local nursery. So here we are. We're gonna mix that in with the native soil. And there's one other thing we're gonna to add to the product as well. And this here is your fertilizer. This product I'm holding here is made by Espoma. You, what you wanna look for when actually picking up an organic product is you wanna see where it's derived from. And this here is all derived from living things, such as, and if you can focus and read here, hydrolyzed feather meals, pasteurized poultry manure, bone meal, alfalfa meal, um, green, green sand, humates, sulfates of potash and sulfate of potash and mag magnesia. So you've got all of these different things that are all derived from organic sources that are gonna help feed again the soil organisms that are in turn going to help improve and give all of those micronutrients both macro which are your nitrogen phosphorus and potassium as well as your micronutrients which are all these other ingredients so we're going to open this bag up as well and we're going to add this to the base and we're going to be adding some to the topsoil as well so we're going to mix this in as well so we mix it up we're gonna put a couple shovelfuls off to the side, which will be part of the backfill. And then here we go. So we've added compost, we've enriched it with an organic fertilizer, and now we're gonna put the plant in the hole. 
But one of the things I noticed, and I kind of mentioned it at the beginning of the video, this side branch, I do not want it. It's not part of my design. I want to grow this into a tree form. This here is going to be my primary branch. So I'm actually going to remove this side lateral branch. I'm going to remove this one off to the side as well. So this is coming out. And we've got this as well. And actually this shoot, I really want to keep it. It's coming so close to the base and you've actually seen um, some other YouTube videos that I've created with a multi-branch fruit tree. And I kind of, because it's so low to the base, it's going to look beautiful if I can actually pull this right branch to my right and this left branch to the left and try to create either a V. And if I get another third shoot that comes out, I can actually do a multi-trunk branch that's all coming out from the bottom. And if I can just pull them into their respective spaces. So I'm keeping this one side shoot just because I can foresee that it's going to add another nice fruiting branch to this um, structure. <laughs> so here we go. You're now going to want to tap the sides, pat on the bottom, and pull gently. And here it comes. So when you get the tree, inspect the root base. And you can see that this plant's been in that pot for quite some time as the roots are coiled. So you're going to want to carefully pull and gently wake up these roots. If you need to pull some of them off, that's okay. That's not going to hurt the tree. And we're just going to put that in the bottom of the hole here. And make sure that when you plant it, you don't want, and here we're actually looking at design. We've got the side branch. I want to make sure that it's actually viewing this way. And so again, I'm looking at the design and how it's going to um, grow over its lifespan. <laughs> so when planting it in the ground, you want to make sure that the plant is no deeper from where it was in the pot to where it is in the ground. If you actually bury it too low in the ground, the plant risks root rot. Every time you water, you're going to be rotting this, this stem, the bark, and the trunk of the tree. So we want to make sure that it stays at the same level and sometimes maybe even a half an inch to an inch higher as the plant will settle over time. As there's a lot of compost that's underneath it until the roots actually get established and make their way into the native soil around its root ball. So now we're just going to backfill this around. We're gonna make a nice ring around this so that when you water it, the water will stay contained in this area around the root ball. And then it's important to remove any air pockets that may be around the plant. And the way we're gonna do that is by gently tapping with your shoe around the side. Now I'm not pressing too hard. And the last step here is we're going to feed it one more time. So I'm taking about another half a cup around the tree. I'm going to take another handful of compost. And again, what this organic fertilizer and compost is going to do is it's going to feed the earthworms. It's going to feed the nematodes. It's going to feed all the bacteria, which again, in turn, is going to feed this tree and keep it a happy and healthy tree. Our Next step now is I'm going to pass the floor to my assistant that's been videotaping. She's now going to go and coat the um, tree with, let me pull up this product here. She's now going to coat it with this Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. If you um, zoom in over here, you can see that it's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier um, protection from sunburn, insects, and rodents. And what we're going to do now is paint the tree trunk with this product as today is expected to be close to 90 degrees here in Southern California. We're going to paint the tree trunk as it's exposed. If this were naturally growing in the wild, it would actually be a bush form and it would not have any exposed tree trunks. So every time we go and try to design the trees to be, to be in this tree form, we're actually um, creating a tree trunk that's exposed. And you'll see a lot of trees are actually either cracked, there's going to be insect damage, and many times we will see these trees suffering and die where the entire part of the tree on the inside is hollow from all the wood boring insects that have gotten into it. So we're going to coat this with ivory organics to protect it again from sunburn, sun scald, insects and rodents from chewing on it. There's a lot of wildlife up here. And after that, we're then just going to make a solution to spray the entire top of the plant and create a sunblock that will keep this plant cool as roots get established and off to a good start. So here we go. Hi. I've 
I'm Isabel Rose and I'm going to be painting this tree with Ivy Organics. Organics. And now I'm going to put a little bit of Bob Organics in this bottle. And you'll be putting two teaspoons of Ivy Organics in here. And then you're going to be putting the lid on. And then you're going to shake the Ivy Organics and water in. And now you're going to be spraying the leaf. And now I'm done. Bye. So I hope you found that helpful. You just saw Isabel. She just um, helped us with the tree painting. She helped guard now the bark from sunburn, sun scald, insects, and rodents with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, an organic paint product. And then she used one to two teaspoons in a spray bottle and used that as an organic sunblock to protect the entire tree from actually burning. Um, we want, especially we're at the end of spring going into summer, we've got some really hot months against us. This here is going to help the plant stay protected from dehydration while the plant gets its roots established and hopefully puts out another huge flush of growth hopefully a few more feet out this year and maybe goes into bloom as early as next year our next step is we're gonna stake the tree and this is gonna be our next tip when you stake the tree and take these gloves off and we're gonna put that in the ground near the plant if your plant comes with a stake remove it it's usually on too tight you want to also get a stake that's not metal. This is a metal stake, but it's covered in vinyl plastic, which helps keep the plant cooler. Um, if, the, if this were a metal pole, it would actually overheat and actually burn the plant. But the plastic that's on this actually will not harm the plant. Another good alternative would be wood or bamboo. Next, we're going to take some string and we're going to tie a piece over here. And make sure when you tie the tree, to the stake, you actually tie the knot never against the tree, but instead against the stake. If you can zoom in over here, you'll see that I'm actually tying my knot against the stake, and then I'm just going to wrap the tree around, and then bring it to the stake, and not tie it on too tight. I'm leaving plenty of room that as the tree grows, it'll never be constricted over the next year or two, and as the, plea, as the tree matures, we'll be adding different stakes if any um, if the plant <laughs> needs it so here we are and we're gonna cut off the excess string and now we've staked the tree the next tip is watering you want to make sure when you first install the tree you actually soak it and water it a lot and you're gonna be watering it at least every two to three days especially if you're in spring and summer you want to make sure that root ball stays wet but not every day the maximum would be, would be every other day. So that's three waterings in a week. But as this plant gets established, and we just learned at the beginning of this video, this is a drought tolerant pomegranate plant. Most pomegranates are considered drought tolerant. So we wanna make sure that we get it established. And what makes it drought tolerant is when its roots are actually expanded over its entire growing zone. This is a brand new installed plant. It'll be drought tolerant after it gets established, which will be next year. So this year we're gonna need to water it until it gets established. So again, the first um, month or two, water every two to three days. And as it becomes more established, once a week may be appropriate. And now we're going to water. So what I brought here is a vitamin B1 product. There's actually a lot of products um, they can pick up at your garden center, but this here will actually help it with the transplant shock. We did rip off a few of the roots. We've disturbed it a little bit from its original environment in the pot, but this here is gonna help it 
um, get adjusted mm -hmm. and not go into shock. The first thing I want to do here is shake it. We're going to add about a tablespoon. Make sure you follow the directions on the container. This is a two gallon bucket of water and we're going to water around it. When I'm actually done with this tree, I'll actually have at least five to 10 gallons of water on this um, for the first day and in the future, probably two gallons, as we said, every two to two to three days, depending on the temperatures. But we're gonna be experiencing close to 90s almost every day here. I'm actually gonna do this a little faster and just dump it out. So we'll put a hose on this later and just continue watering. The final tip I wanna share with you, and I'm gonna review all this at the end to make sure I've got all 10 in today, is if the plant actually has any insects or pests on it, my first advice is do nothing. If you see, so if you see any aphids on your plant, it doesn't mean to necessarily spray it. If you see that the plant is being harmed so badly by pests that it needs it, then I'm gonna come up with a couple alternatives. But in my garden right now, I've been looking around for pests and there's none. And there's so many predators. I've got spiders, I've got praying mantis, I've got ladybugs and birds and a variety of, of predators that are actually feeding on what we consider the pests, which are the, you know, which are the aphids and grasshoppers that can harm your plants and, uh, and a variety of other things that I can actually maybe chew on your leaves or suck on the, on the plant or any other things that might be considered as harmful to your plant. But if it's minor damage, I wouldn't do anything to your plant. I would actually leave it because that's the food for the predators that are in your garden. So my first advice is do nothing. But if you have to do something, I've got two products that I'm gonna actually um, bring to you so you don't have to move. The first one here is Captain Jack's Dead Bug. This is a product and you'll actually find it, but what makes this one so special is it's got, a, um, it's got their active ingredient being a spinosad, which is a bacteria. And this bacteria is only found in one place in the world and any insects that actually consume it, it actually ends their life cycle. So this is an organic way of actually controlling insects. And another one of my favorites is using a neem oil. So if you see anything that has neem oil, and here it says at the very top that it's for organic gardening. And I believe this one over here also has its sticker as well, for organic gardening. But what neem oil does, and you can take a look here, neem oil has the benefits of being an insecticide and also a fungicide and also a miticide. But neem oil comes from the neem tree and it's an oil that if it's ingested by the bug actually ends the insect's life cycle. If it's a nymph or an adult, it basically within a matter of days stops growing, starts stops developing and ultimately kills the insect if they consume it. And most insects are actually repelled from it. So if you spray neem on your, on your plants, that'll actually keep them off. So, Let's review real quick, and I'm actually gonna put this list at the very bottom of my video as well, so you can actually see all these things. So I gave you the 10 tips for a helpful fruit tree planting, and this here we're next to again is the wonderful pomegranate um, variety of pomegranates. And this applies to all fruit trees, and actually all trees in general. The 10 tips, I'm just gonna recap it again, you'll find it um, below in the comments. One, start with a grafted tree or cutting. It's preferred over a seedling, as a seedling is usually a chance genetics, just like children, I don't want to say some are good and some are bad, but they're different. And if you plant a seed from a pomegranate, you're going to get a variety of pomegranates. The wonderful variety was picked in particular because it was a good variety and cuttings have been taken off of it and, and grafted so that they're identical to the parent plant. So if you're, you're buying something you know is going to be a good tree compared to with a seedling, it could be fruitless, it could have inferior fruit, and it could also be superior fruit. But you're taking a chance if you plant a seedling variety. And the other um, negative when it comes to seedlings is it takes a lot longer for them to go into fruit production. Whereas a cutting and also grafted variety will go into fruit production typically in the first year or two. Number two, dig a hole two times wider and at typically the same depth as the pot. Number three, you're gonna brush Ivy Organics on the tree trunk and branches that are exposed to too much sun to protect from sunburn as well as sun scald. Also helps protect if you um, put it on lower from any gnawing rodents and also helps with any insects on any pruned branches um, that may exist or any exposed areas on the tree branch and track and tree trunk and branches. So we just talked about wood chips around it. What the benefits of the wood chips are, it's gonna continuously feed the soil organisms. It's also gonna insulate the soil and it's actually gonna keep it warmer at night, just like the insulation of your house. And another benefit of actually putting the wood chips around the base is it's gonna retain moisture. So 
When we go to water around the, the plant, it's going to keep that moisture in the soil. It's going to be harder for it to evaporate out of the soil um, and dry that root ball out. So a lot of benefits for actually adding wood chips around it, which is going to be our next step over here. When it comes to pest control, we talked about neem oil and spinosad as being your alternatives, but if anything, do nothing unless you actually see severe damage to your plant and it's, um, and it's really your means for last resort. There's a lot of predators typically in an organic garden and, and pest control is usually not necessary. Water initially, two to three times in the first week and for the first couple of months thereafter, um, all the way through <laughs> summer. Um, it's gonna now, it's got three months of hot, intense days coming its way. We're gonna wanna make sure we actually keep that root ball nice and moist and as those roots get established, so it's off to a good start and as it becomes more drought resistant going into year two. Stake the trees loosely. We put the tree in here, we tied the knot to the stake. If it already comes staked when you purchased it from the nursery, make sure you take that one off. It's usually on too tight. So we are, we're actually tying the knot to the stake, keep at least an inch or two between the tree, and then wrap that, um, that, that string around it that way. And my 10th tip is feed your trees three times a year. We just did it now in spring. We're gonna feed one more time mid to late summer. Same thing in the fall and never, unless it's a unique type of plant that needs fertilizing in the winter, but most plants are not fertilized in the winter as plants typically go into dormancy. It's their slow season and it's just not the time to fertilize. So fertilize spring, summer, and fall, three times a year. Make sure you feed your plants so that they can feed you. Anyway, so I hope you found this video informative. I've discussed 10 helpful planting tips when putting a tree in your garden. If you've enjoyed this, be sure to like it. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe down below. Ivy Organics now has dozens of YouTube videos for you to enjoy, all coming from myself, a biologist and also plant expert with Ivy Organics, three-in-one tree guard paint. And I hope you have wonderful results just as our wonderful pomegranate is gonna be off to a wonderful start. Um, happy gardening and thanks again for watching. Take care.